in a bar within the domain of battle worlds known as Killville. Electro is bragging about his feats. The Thors tried to stop him from crossing borders, but this villain doesn't like to be told what to do. As if they could even lay a hand on him anyway. The only law Electro follows is that of the Red Skull. However, this talk is interrupted when a man walks in and shoots the bar patrons dead. He forcibly grabs Electro and drags him to a nearby helicopter. The villain is surprised to find himself surrounded by a team gathered on the Orders of Doom. Every one of these fools dared to defy the ruler of Battleworld, and now they have just one chance at survival. The team members are Electro, Magneto, Moonstone, Jack-O-Lantern, Lady Deathstrike, and the Winter Soldier. If they want to keep living, they will need to complete a mission for Doom. Their task is to find the Red Skull, an insurrectionist who was banished to the Deadlands. Though assumed dead, rumor has it that the Red Skull is alive and planning an attack on Doom's realm. So the team must find the remains of the Red Skull. Magneto dismisses this mission as impossible. The Deadlands kill anyone who enters, mind, body, and soul. Nobody has ever come back from there alive. But the man who gathered this team together says nothing is impossible. He introduces himself as Crossbones and claims to have survived the Deadlands. Electro scoffs at all of this and tries to escape, only for him to be shocked by a collar that had been placed around his neck. They are all equipped with this device, which will allow Doom's forces to control the villains and suppress their powers enough to prevent their escape. Electro asks why Bucky isn't wearing a collar, and Crossbones explains that the lunatic volunteered for this mission. The Winter Soldier says nothing other than the fact that he and the Red Skull have some unfinished business. As the copter arrives at the shield, Crossbones says that the team has 24 hours to find evidence of the Red Skull's death. If they don't make it back in time, they will be left for dead. But if they do, they will get their freedom. At the shield, Crossbones casually kills a nearby T-Rex, who he refers to as the guard. The team heads out through a tunnel in the shield. Within these sewers, Moonstone states they should all abandon this mission and find a way back to Battleworld as soon as possible. But Bucky says that isn't really an option here in the Deadlands. Right now, their first priority is, and can only be, survival. With their powers suppressed, the team has no choice but to continue on. It does not take long for the Winter Soldier to find evidence of the Red Skull's presence here in the Deadlands, and Electro is suddenly hopeful. Not only are they going to find the Red Skull, but he is confident the fabled insurrectionists will be able to lead them out of here alive. But in an instant, a zombified version of Electro bites the very much alive one and the team is surrounded by zombies. The Winter Soldier orders everyone to keep close and not let them get overwhelmed, but it is too late for Electro, who is devoured alive. Magneto curses the inhibitor collars, which are making his powers useless, while Moonstone and Lady Deathstrike fall to the zombies. Pretty soon the entire team is overwhelmed and all but one die a gruesome death. Only Magneto is left standing, he curses this mission. It was pointless. Nobody could survive here. But suddenly, the zombies are brutally killed, and a voice tells Eric to get up. There is power in the world believing you have died. In other words, come with me if you want to die. Magneto has little time to react to the appearance of the Red Skull as the two men are quickly swarmed once again by the undead. Fortunately, the Red Skull finds the Winter Soldier's shield and happily takes up any opportunity to sully the memory of his old foe. When Eric refuses to work with the Red Skull, who he views as a monster, the legendary fugitive uses the shield to knock Magneto out cold. Unconscious, Magneto dreams of him and the X-Men facing an incursion. Rogue begs for help as the world around them is destroyed. Eric wakes up some time later and finds himself being dragged through the jungles of the Deadlands. 
Magneto threatens his captor, but the Red Skull knows that the mutant is no danger to him so long as Eric wears the inhibitor collar. The villain takes Magneto to a secret hideout, held within the mouth of a defunct sentinel. Though Eric refuses to enter, the Red Skull points out that he has no other choice, and the mutant reluctantly goes in. Inside, Magneto mentions that he is surprised that the Red Skull wants to help anyone, and the man replies that the Deadlands have a way of changing people, making them do things they'd never thought they'd do. When the Skull begins to drink from Sentinel coolant, Magneto realizes that his captor slash savior is quite mad. Eric is tempted to just kill the Red Skull right now and earn his freedom from doom. However, he is surprised when the Red Skull openly offers Magneto a blade made entirely from adamantium and goads the mutant into attacking. Magneto obliges only for the Red Skull to easily overpower the weakened mutant in spite of being impaled in the hand in the process. Still, the Red Skull is impressed, even letting Magneto keep the dagger as a sort of participation award just for having tried. The villain finally manages to persuade the mutant to join forces with him after offering to remove Magneto's collar. Together, the two men set out for New Xandar. Crossing the sea, the Red Skull asks Eric what people say of him in Doom's world. When Magneto says that everybody thinks he is dead, the Red Skull comments that both men are only really guilty of not believing Doom is a real god. Suddenly, the men are surrounded by the forces of Annihilus. They surrender their weapons and are brought to the Lord of New Xandar. The Red Skull offers to Annihilus a way past the wall and into the rest of Battleworld, presenting Magneto as their way out. Annihilus is impressed at this ambitious plan, as it will mean taking on Doom himself, but the tyrant knows that he isn't the one who's going to need to be convinced. Magneto is furious, as all he wants is not war, but to be free. But the Red Skull points out that freedom is impossible if Doom rules over Battleworld as a false god. Magneto doesn't trust the Red Skull, so the villain replies that he has faith in Magneto and frees his companion of the inhibitor collar. Testing out his returned powers, he easily kills one of Annihilus' lackeys. The tyrant is furious at this, but the Red Skull holds him off, asking what Magneto will do now that he is free and the Red Skull's life is now in the mutant's hands. Frustrated, Magneto flies into a rage, unleashing his full power and tearing the surrounding room into pieces. Annihilus is enraged at this, but the Red Skull knows what is happening and that everything will be okay. Taking the debris from this outburst, Magneto surrounds himself in armor and asks to be taken to where the wall is at its weakest. The shield will fall, Doom's rule will end, and then Battleworld will belong to the Red Skull. The attack begins. With the Annihilation Wave at their side, Magneto and the Red Skull prepare to tear down the wall of their oppressors. First they will take the shield, then Doom and his kingdoms. But Magneto holds off knowing that the forces of the wall will have some tricks up their sleeves. Sure enough, Abigail Brand orders the activation of the Sentinels. Eric relishes the opportunity to strike at these machines with his full power, but he quickly realizes that something is terribly wrong. His powers have no effect on the robots. All at once, he knows he has been betrayed. Neither the Sentinels nor the wall are made of metal. Brand orders her army to clean house, and under heavy fire, the Annihilation Wave scrambles. Magneto is furious, but decides to attack the shield anyway, only to be blasted back by a sentinel energy beam. The machines unleash a devastating wave of energy, and all at once, the battle is over. Amongst the ashes, Magneto has been gruesomely injured. He fumes over being used, tricked, but the Red Skull is nowhere to be found. He has retreated back to the Deadlands and begins to fight his way through a horde of zombies. But Magneto is easily able to find his former ally and attacks. But the Red Skull has one more trick and he reactivates Eric's inhibitor collar. Now severely weakened, Magneto engages his enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat and the two men ignore the zombies that surround them. 
Eric pulls out the dagger gifted to him by the skull and lunges for his enemy, only for the villain to fling the mutant into the hands of the zombies. Magneto cries out as he is devoured alive, but he refuses to die like this and takes off the inhibitor collar, knowing what will happen. Meanwhile, the Red Skull flees into the tunnel where Magneto came to the Deadlands. He remarks that Magneto could have been useful in the war against Doom, but he knows that Brand's people will inevitably learn that he survived the attack, creating the myth of a legendary man who survived a slaughter while also providing a viable distraction for his escape. But as soon as he exits the tunnel, the villain is shot in the head. It didn't matter who came back from the Deadlands. Crossbones would have shot anyone. He apologizes to his former employer. It was nothing personal, and Crossbones doesn't have any particular need to help Doom. But at the end of the day, he was the only man who has ever escaped from the Forbidden Zones, and Crossbones intends to keep it that way. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is the complete story of Red Skull. So again, we have a Secret Wars tie-in that I have mixed feelings about. I do like the artistic style of this comic, more or less, and the story does have some really good twists and turns throughout it. The only downside is I do find the ending a bit weak. It leaves a real feeling of wondering what the point of all this was, and really gives me an impression of a rather flat ending. It's not that big a deal, but it did come across as disappointing. The Red Skull's plan is deeply and profoundly flawed to the extent that it felt out of character. Yes, it's implied that he's a bit deranged after spending so much time in the Deadlands drinking sentinel fluid, but all that adds to the pointlessness of our main character with just essentially being crazy. And it's okay to have a main character who's mentally... touched, but there's no point to that in this story. It's just done for no apparent reason. So I question the entire purpose of this tie-in. What emotions are we supposed to feel? What lesson are we supposed to learn? What fun is supposed to have with this ending? Sure, the first two issues were pretty fun, and I did enjoy them, but the ending doesn't quite land it. Ultimately, it's hard to recommend a three-issue tie-in like this for these reasons, which is a shame because up until the last issue, I had really enjoyed Red Skull. Oh well, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics. 